This is the digital music trends coverage of South by Southwest 2014, an interview with Sachin Doshi, head of development and analysis at Spotify. DMT's coverage of South by Southwest is brought to you by Omniphone, the leading B2B cloud music provider powering global music services including Sony Music Unlimited, Guvera, Rara and Sirius XM. Find out more on Omniphone.com and by Music Graph, the world's first knowledge engine for music available as a consumer app and as a graph API for developers. Check out MusicGraph.com or Developer.MusicGraph.com. This is a Digital Music Trends coverage of South by Southwest 2014 and uh, I'm here with uh, Sachin Doshi from uh, Spotify. So hi Sachin, thanks for joining me. How's it going? Hi, nice to meet you. And uh, Sachin is uh, Spotify's Head of Development and Analysis and we're just here in front of the Spotify house. We can see that like, there's a crazy line here. So yeah. <laughs> It's going great this year. <laughs> Absolutely. And so, you know, first of all, I want to talk about Spotify's audience uh, and uh, you recently uh, announced uh, the opening up of the platform uh, to, uh, for free to mobile users uh, in a sort of limited way. Mm -hmm. And also uh, giving a comparable experience uh, as desktop for tablet users as well. So, how has that inf affected uh, you know the, the audience that you have? Have you seen a spike uh, in usage, uh, and then how has that worked? Yeah. So, um, you know, we've been noticing for a long time before we launched the product that um, consumers, music listeners, had been abandoning their desktop. They were joining Spotify or downloading Spotify directly on their mobile or their tablet, um, never using their desktop to listen to music um, as the smartphone penetration has gotten um, much greater. And we realized that for our freemium model to continue to uh, effectively grow the paid subscriber base, we needed to have some kind of free mobile option. Yeah. But of course, at the same time, maintaining some amount of uh, functionality for premium users only. Um, so we released the product in December that was um, a limited, as you say, somewhat limited free mobile product uh, on smartphones and um, bringing our desktop free on-demand product to tablets. And what's happened basically is we have um, seen more and more users uh, stay yeah. and continue to use the service where before this, the moment they were asked to put their credit card in, they left or uh, most of them left, some of them would subscribe. What we're seeing now is we're retaining many more of those users. They continue awesome. to use the service and then over time they will convert to our paid tier. Uh, whereas before we just lose them all together. That's great. And yeah. Talking about conversion to the paid tier, so we're seeing an increasing number of um, amazing apps that are integrating the Spotify API out there. Yep. And uh, and of course those are limited at the moment to the premium subscribers. So do you see that as a real driver for premium subscriptions for the company? Yeah, I mean I think as as that ecosystem continues to grow, we expect that it will help us continue to convert uh, users to paying. And honestly, we want to make sure that people who are willing to pay ten pounds, ten euros, ten dollars a month are able to listen to music everywhere that they might. Uh, interact or experience music. Sure, absolutely. And looking at uh, the uh, back-end side of things, we just released the beta of the uh, mobile SDK for iOS. Yep. So that's going to make it easier than ever for third-party developers to integrate uh, Spotify within their own apps. Yes. So, uh, you know, uh, what kind of uh, usage are, are you thinking Are you thinking of uh, here? <laughs> it could be anything, honestly. It's, it's anywhere that you would kind of experience music, whether that's just listening, having some type of interactions. Um, it, uh, it could be, a, a, there's a, like a history of music app or yeah. Uh, or as um, there, we just released, uh, or a company just released an app called Pacemaker, which is yeah. a DJ app, which allows you to um, to basically use Spotify streams as the source for your uh, for your DJ performances. I mean, there's. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can imagine integrating music uh, yeah. into an app and, and we want to support all of it. Yeah, sure. And looking at the ecosystem, of course, uh, uh, you started out in the app space with, the, with your own apps on the desktop client. Yep. So uh, how, how are you planning to move that forward? Um, it's unclear. I mean, that's been a very successful for us, yeah. uh, you know, especially for our power users who really engage with those apps quite a bit. Um, we have to, you know, we're continuing to evolve that platform so that it's better integrated into the overall Spotify experience. Sure. Uh, and as you said, build better tools for people to uh, integrate Spotify into their own apps and their own uh, sites. Yeah, absolutely. And looking at the uh, latest news of this week, uh, of course, the acquisition of the Aconest was a was a really big deal because mm -hmm. I've known those guys for forever, and uh, you know, it's yeah. a, it's a great acquisition. So yeah. uh, from from your front, from you know, so the analytics and, and development front, what what is exciting about this? You know, we've we've been working with the Aconest for a long time as well. Yeah. I think you know, for years we've recognized recognized um, the great work that they've done um, in machine listening and in understanding uh, trends on the web and, yeah. and really developing uh, probably the, the strongest data set around how people were consuming music outside of a, an actual digital ser a streaming service or a download service. Um, we, you know, we think they're a natural fit for Spotify in helping us improve and continue to get better at um, 
uh, d music discovery on Spotify. Yeah, absolutely. And we talked a lot about you know uh, apps uh, uh, that are using the Spotify API, mm -hmm. but Spotify also uses uh, uh, APIs from other companies to improve uh, to improve your service. For example, Songcake is now uh, fairly well integrated within yep. the desktop client, and you have a lot of concert recommendations for uh, gigs happening nearby yep. of artists that you're following. Uh, also, you now you've uh, you had an interesting partnership with Next Big Sound for the for the artists, uh, yep. um, uh, you know, data yep. that you know finally artists can get uh, a better look at what who's listening to uh, what where yep. uh, uh, through Spotify. So, how are you seeing those partnerships evolve, and and what kind of benefits are they bringing to the company? I mean, Songkick started really uh, at first as an app partner on our yep. desktop app. Uh, what we've done with both ticketing and merchandise, uh, with Topspin and with other partners, uh, is to um, allow users to very easily purchase tickets and merchandise from an artist yeah. um, on the service. And the idea here is that we want to provide as many tools as possible for artists to engage their fans on Spotify, and we're evolving that over time. Um, Next Big Sound was a, a somewhat different partnership. That is. Uh, that was really to give artists an understanding of how their content was being used on Spotify. Yeah. Um, you know what kind of streaming volume they were seeing, um, who, what kind of demographics were listening to their audience, and the idea is to then for them to be able to use that dashboard to better underst better understand their business, uh, how Spotify is affecting their business, and also using Spotify as a better promotional tool, um, using the data to decide you know what kind of activities they might want to partake in, whether that's tour planning or. You know whether appearing on a late night talk show helps them spike uh, streams. All of these different things that the Next Big Sound dashboard um, allows artists to see. Um, we wanted to make sure that they could see Spotify's impact on their business through that. Yeah, sure. Looking at the international uh, landscape, you know, Spotify is expanding into more and more countries all the time. And yep. So, uh, you know, uh, how are you finding uh, providing uh, uh, a great local catalog and support for that analysis and uh, and sort of uh, all the right tools for local people to understand uh, uh, and, and and find the lo local access content as well. Yeah, so we are, um, you know, only over the last year have we really stretched outside of our sort of Western Europe, un United States kind yeah. of um, in, like sort of initial uh, launch territories. And what we're finding is that um, we're much more successful, obviously, when we spend the time to localize playlists, you know, help users, especially at the beginning. Ultimately, what we do all the time is to use the listening data to then power the discovery and to power what we uh, what we surface to our users. So very quickly after we launch, we're able to use our initial users listening to help um, to help new users discover new music. Um, at the beginning, we're just doing more work, kind of manually curating playlists. We have a browse feature. Um, I don't know if yeah. you've seen it, but. Um, our browse feature is one in which Spotify programs fantastic playlists, and we've been um, localizing all of those playlists so that when we launch in a in a country in Asia or in South America, you'll see um, heavily localized content in those playlists. Um, and our radios or our radio stations are more heavily localized. So everything so that when a, especially for those first few months when users go into the service, immediately they know that that service is for them, yeah. not just for Europe and the U.S. That's awesome, Asher. You know, the last thing I was going to end on was that you know it's been written in a few places that. You know the fact that you acquired the Aconest uh, is a is a reinforcement of the fact that you're more uh, attached to the data side than into the into the personal side of things. But you know the playlists are a really key factor for yeah. Spotify as well. Yeah, we've always look. The data is an extremely important resource for us to be able to plan and to to understand various parts of a business, whether that's product features or how music how people are listening to music. Um, but ultimately, especially in terms of how people connect with music, you have to be able to match that with some human element. We've right. never, we've never said otherwise. And you know, we launched, um, we acquired Tunago last year, and then integrated yeah. them into our browse feature, so that we did have that option, uh, and we did have that feature for our users to be able to find uh, curated playlists. And the other thing is that Spotify has always been a platform for our users to to power that as well. So. Yeah. Any user can become a tastemaker on the service and become, you know, we have a follow platform so that, um, and you know, if I wanted to go on and, and discover new music, I could follow tastemakers on the service. That could be sure. you, that could be um, a celebrity, it could be anybody. And, um, and we just use the power of our own fan, our own user base to be able to manually and human curation of music. That's fantastic. And finally, uh, what artists are you most excited about seeing at Spotify House this week? Uh, well, we just saw Jungle, who are fantastic. Awesome. Uh, Fanagram played yesterday. They're great. Um, St. Paul and the Broken Bones, for those of you who don't know, great retro wow. soul act. Um, it's a great lineup all yeah. week, and uh, we're really looking forward to enjoying the rest of it. That's great. Well, Sachin, thanks so much for your yeah, time. Absolutely. Thank you. And thanks for listening to the DMT coverage of Southwest Southwest. Uh, it's, uh, it's all on digitalmusictrends.com, so go and find it there.